Hello once again YouTube, Chris the Nightbringer here bringing you some Star Made New Eden Fleet Works and today we have the Kaldari Cormorant. So this is a Kaldari Destroyer. It's one of the most iconic destroyers in EVE and for probably almost like like half a decade this ship has been in the game or at least this particular design of it. I don't really know uh, how long this particular model of this ship has been in the game but it's a fairly iconic Kaldari Destroyer. And it is filled to the brim with details, and the interior will knock your socks off. I at least hope that is the effect, because I spent a lot of time on this thing. And it's taken a very long time to finish. A uh, couple weeks worth of time, I'd say. Um, as you can tell, I'm not a quick builder. But, uh, this is going to be a full tour of the ship. I'm going to show you all the details, give you, you know, bits of information, show you all the cool things that can uh, you can do with the ship, and all the cool things that I put in it and all sorts of stuff. So we're just gonna look at the exterior real quick. Uh, we've got some nice engines in the back. In the past I tried replicating the exact look of the engines on the ships and I think I'm gonna be changing that so that instead I'm just gonna be filling in the thruster areas with this glowing effect with the ice and the lights. And in case you were wondering how to do that it's just ice with lights behind it. Uh, right? And uh, this, in my opinion, just looks better. Some of the engines just aren't so appealing once they're finished. They're kind of boring and plain. And you can probably tell by looking at the Dragoon engines. They look cool. They look like engines, but they're not like, wow, that thing's, you know, totally thrusting through space. So I definitely wanted to uh, do something more interesting. And uh, ice is the new technique that allows you to pull off some really new engines. So uh, I've been using that. Uh, you can see all the paneling underneath, all the little details. There's tons of exposed pipes on this ship, and I don't know why, but there's tons of pipes exposed and all sorts of mechanical bits uh, on the sides here. And over here we've got the Kaldari logo embedded on the side. Now this logo in particular changes based on what faction the ship is uh, painted as. So one th cool thing that's uh, recently happened in EVE is they introduced ship skins, and basically it's a camouflage uh, technology, I would say, that allows a ship to disguise itself as a member of another faction. Now, honestly, I don't really know why people within the same faction would be able to do that, because right now, only Kaldari ships have the skins for other Kaldari factions, and Amar only have skins for other Amar factions. They don't really mix between the factions. Ships can only use skins that apply to their own factions or sh uh, factions that would be using the ship so it's a little bit weird in that sense but nonetheless that is now a legitimate thing in EVE Online which means that there are legitimate reasons for me to provide alternate ship skins that being said I will be holding some of them uh, for myself and I will probably find a way to release them as some sort of uh, contest in the future or something probably through my twitch stream maybe I don't know Maybe if you donate, I'll give you a ship skin. I have no idea. I'll find a way to do it. But that's an idea, and I don't really want to release every single ship I make. Um, I'm starting to see people use them uh, a lot of my ships. I don't know why, and I'm starting to see people uh, take my ships and repurpose them and refit them. And, like, part of me is like, wow, that's awesome, and part of me is like, no, I want to keep it for myself. So I got to think of a way to, you know, give away some cool ships and keep other cool ships for myself, I guess, because I don't want to give them all away. I don't want to keep you from getting uh, cool ships either, though. So that's pretty much all of the exterior. The uh, turret hard points are right here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Now, in terms of what the ship is supposed to be capable of fitting in EVE Online, it's, uh, uh, what is it? God, I don't even know. I can't remember. Uh, it's something like two missile launchers, two turret missile launchers, and uh, 14 gun turrets. Now, in EVE, that's split in two, so that's really seven regular turrets and one missile launcher module. But uh, based on the actual number of turrets that you are placing on this ship and the number of turret hardpoints, it's actually two and 14. Anyway, I'm going to jump out and we're going to take a look at the inside because that is where I did the, probably the most of the work. So we have the button for the door here. And uh, this is the cargo bay. So I'm going to shut this off and bam, look at this. This is 
Oh, man. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm impressed with myself. This is probably one of the most detailed interiors I've ever done. And I really love it, because it finally allowed me to get down the Kaldari style. Which was a pain in the ass, because it's all very angular, and it's quite plain, which is a shame. Uh, over here we have turret hardpoint axis. Right below this is actually a turret uh, hardpoint. So this is like, you know, if you wanted to maintain the turret and fix it, this is where you would go. This is all very roleplay uh, based. You know, if you want to roleplay on this ship, this is the one to freaking do it on because there's so much stuff in here. This right here is an ammo sorter uh, because EVE Online ships use ammunition and they use different types of ammunition. And so this is like some sort of you know, gimmicky little way of representing the fact that the ship has ammo and that it needs to be loaded onto the guns. This actually doesn't go anywhere. There are four of these on the ship in each of the uh, sections off to the side where most of the guns are located. You could probably tell where those are by looking at the exterior. Uh, I won't show you just yet. I guess I'll take you uh, through the uh, bottom floor first to the bottom deck. I don't know how deck naming conventions work on actual ships, so uh, if somebody knows, tell me, feel free to do that. I'm seeing a few blocks that I need to fix, too. Here is another turret hardpoint access, uh, and one on the other side. This right here is an elevator, and I love this, so uh, I'm going to hit that button and get out of here. That is going to go up to the next deck above us, which is pretty much where everything else of, on the ship is. This is mostly an engineering and maintenance deck, right? Um, it goes up to the next deck, and if you want, uh, you can press the call button, it will bring the elevator back down, and it will open the doors, and this is like fully functional system, like you press the button when you get inside, like I just did, and it will close the doors, the doors at the top will remain closed until the elevator arrives, once it arrives the doors open, all sorts of stuff, I can press this, it's gonna come back, it's really fun, I love it. I hope I don't totally just mess that up by pressing that prematurely, but oh well. Uh, actually, we can find out. Did the door on top close? Yes, it did. So that's the elevator shaft. You can see the other button up there. And that's really fun. I, uh, I like that. The logic behind that is ridiculous, and it could probably be, uh, uh, narrowed down to fewer blocks, but I did not decide to do that. Here's the other ammo loading station. Pretty similar and almost identical to the one in front. There's the other one on the other side. This is a maintenance hallway. If there's Stuff I can find to put in this hallway, sure, I will do it, but honestly, there's not much that I can put in here. This is mostly for getting the modules from the cargo bay to back here. This is where you will place modules. This is also where the jump drive computer is located, and this is in the back of the ship, right behind, or right in front of the engines in the back there. So we've got small modules over here. There's two small modules that you can fit on this ship. This is, uh, if in the future there is ever a water or air purification system that you need to put on ships or some sort of life support systems, this is where I will be putting it. And uh, over here we have the locations for the media modules. There are three media modules that you can place, two of them right here. I've also done a new thing where I'm placing uh, lights into the module slots so that you know which ones they are. Green is going to be for small, orange is going to be for medium, and red will be for large. However, most cases, in most cases, large means turrets, so you won't be seeing large module slots internally. Uh, here's all the information of the ship. Uh, it's, you know, 50% bonus to optimal range and tracking speed, and uh, it's got seven turrets, one missile, and that's all the stuff. There's no drone capacity, but it has approximately 425 cubic meters of cargo space, which is how much, how many physical blocks you can place down there in the cargo bay inside that uh, hazard-striped area. There's a stairwell that I just passed that goes up to the next deck, but I won't be showing you that because I want to take you through the front of the ship first. So uh, we're going down here, and we'll open up this door, and we'll take this hallway, got a little junction there, into here. Now this room I am impressed with, and I really like this room. This is uh, scan data analysis. Uh, all the ships in EVE are capable of sending out probes and, in general, just scanning in general. So this is where scans are done from. So this is like some sort of model representation of maybe a planet. Who knows? You can scan planets in EVE. Uh, you can scan general space. You can send out probes that do even more precise scans and stuff. So this is the room that you would be doing for all of those types of things, which is really awesome. 
uh, come up here and this is the medical bay. So I've got a full medical bay on here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six medical beds. There's probably room for more, but I don't know. I kind of like the way it's set up right now and I don't want to like put some wall in the middle or something for more medical beds. I really like this. I like taking up space. It's just fun. Um, so we've got all sorts of stuff. This is like the operating room, right? And we have, you know, all sorts of stuff in here. I should probably put find a place to put some chairs in here. This is like a, a table for uh, specimens, I guess, uh, if you wanted to dissect somebody. This is like a CT scan machine or CAT scan, whatever it's called. And here's an operating table, I suppose. Uh, and all sorts of other random stuff. So yeah, this is fun. Come out of here. There are turret hardpoint access points in the medical bay off to the side. There are actually two of them. This one, I believe, goes... Actually, I don't know which way that goes. I guess both of them go up to the ones on the roof. Yep, I guess that makes sense. And there's another one on the other side. Here is the mess hall. So I wanted this to be, you know, a place where everybody could chill. Uh, there's uh, three tables. This is where you get the food. The kitchen is right behind this. To be honest, I would prefer if the kitchen was a little bit larger, but who knows? Maybe they don't need that much room for a kitchen in the future. I guess that would make sense, you know? You don't need as much stuff in a kitchen, or maybe you just don't need to take up as much room in a kitchen with the advanced technology of the future. You can cook food, like, super freaking fast with, like, your cell phone. Who knows? Um, anyway, this is where the elevator comes up. If I press that button, the... Uh, call button, the elevator will come up, and the door will open whenever it gets here. There we go. Beautiful. This is the uh, crew quarters. So these are all bunks for the crews. We have some uh, computers in here and stuff uh, on the edges of these things. And this is pretty much all crew quarters, and I don't really know how many crew can fit on here. I guess 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22... I'd say 30 or f at least 30, probably around 40 crew members can fit on the ship. Uh, full complement. Probably more if you really needed to. This is the uh, the bathrooms, right? There's some toilets here and some showers here. To be honest, this is not nowhere large enough, in my opinion, to accommodate all of the crew members of the ship, but I tried. Uh, there's just very little room in the front of the ship right there. This right here is the mission briefing suite, or tactical briefing suite. This is where crew members would go in order to figure out what the hell they're supposed to do in a certain mission or some sort of scenario coming up. So yeah, there's a camera right there. You can actually switch to that camera and check it out. And uh, yeah, this is, in my opinion, pretty legit. I love this type of stuff because this is without... M most people wouldn't think of putting this, something like this on their ship, but it's legit. It's a thing that people put on their ships. It's it's It needs to exist so all the crew members aren't just like listening to announcements over an intercom or something. Uh, right here we have the computer, the CPU of the ship. If I could put glass in front of this without having that weird glitch where this disappears behind the glass, I would do that, but it's all exposed. Right here we have the... Oh, I don't even know what this one is. This might actually be... Yeah, this is the tactical briefing suite. This is for all the officers and important staff to discuss what the hell is going to happen in the future. The uh, room we just came out of was the Mission Ops room, I believe. Uh, this here is the Officer's Quarters. To be honest, it's a little lackluster, in my opinion. I could have detailed this place a little bit more. Probably do something in here. Some sort of other stripe on the ceiling or something. I don't know. Uh, but this is supposed to be Officer's Quarters. But um, it's, it's not that great. And I don't know why, but I decided to put it in the table. Why not? Uh, and then down here is... Uh, this right here is the way to the bridge. Now this is the main bridge. And back here we have probably some communication stuff, some scanner computer is there, because all my ships have a scanner. And then up here we have the uh, the actual seats for uh, the, the bridge. And I have to say, the view from this place is freaking awesome. So I really like the way this bridge came out. This is the type, type of uh, layout I want to go for the bridges in the future. Uh, on Kaldari ships because it's very military feeling like they're kind of like really tight s spaces and people are packed in kind of like a like helicopter uh, seats I guess helicopter cockpits like you know there's one guy like right in front of the other and no space at all to move around it's really sweet uh, and then we come back here 
And there's one more level. That is not the way to that level. That's the staircase that goes down to the engineering deck. Back here. Oh, that's my phone telling me I ran out of time, but I'm still doing stuff, so. Up here we have the, uh... Oh, God. Tactical bridge. This is where the command officers are telling, you know, uh, the main bridge where to navigate, where to shoot, who to shoot, who to target, what the hell is going on. So, uh, this is, you know, all based on the idea that, you know, this is where people are firing weapons from and stuff. This is at the very top of the ship, which is pretty cool, and right behind it we have the core room. So, I'm going to jump out of gravity real quick, and I'm going to find the... There it is. There's the core. And I want to show you something really cool. So if you wanted to use the core on the ship, or the uh, the pod, I should say, uh, you can open and close these doors. This is the one you want to do in order to get inside the ship. You aim here. Uh, you fire the docker on this. And the armor plates will extend over the pod. And then you can close that door. If you want to put those plates back... Oh. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> that should probably be replaced with a button just so that, you know, is toggleable and not something that stays on. Well, actually, technically it works like that. Whatever. I don't know. Rails have been a little bit buggy. There's the faction module as well, so if you wanted to uh, faction the ship, there you go. So yeah, we have armor plates that come down and protect the core. Uh, they're not extremely, you know, tough. Kaldari are not known for using armor extensively, and in doing uh, this armor setup with standard armor on the exterior, I've realized that this ship may not be as... This ship may actually be tougher than it's intended to be, uh, and I will show you why, because I have set up over here a Kaldari Cormorant with weapon systems, right? So I've fitted this with some of the larger guns that I build producing. These are not, in my opinion, large enough. They still don't do as much damage as I'm hoping they do, despite the fact that recently um, some changes were made to the game that allow more damage to happen. And here are all the camera positions. There's one from above the bridge. There's one in the mission briefing suite or whatever. And one in the front. And actually, real quick, let's see if I can find the logic for those clocks. It should be right here, right? What is this? Where does this go? What the hell? That doesn't make no sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, uh, which one do I activate? I don't even know. There we go. So now the lights should be lighting up. You can see where some of these lights are, maybe? Okay, well, whatever. I guess I split up the uh, all the lights into different logic circuits. It's been a while since I actually completed the ship, and I've been quite busy, so I I haven't been able to put this out as fast as I wanted to. Um, but yeah, this I again, this doesn't do as much damage as I want. Uh, real quick, I'll spawn in another cormorant. And the one thing I am satisfied with in terms of these weapon systems is how slow the shields go down. But, if, of course, if I try and find a way to increase the weapons capability of ships like this, then... Oh, well, I guess I spawned in that ship just now, so the shields had no chance to charge up. But um, it actually took me like a full minute to break the shields of the ship with another Cormorant with a fully fit arsenal of weaponry. Um, one thing that I would like to do, and uh, I have sort of already done, is put in ammunition types. So if we... I have the weapon systems just placed on the top here. So if you hard mount the turrets that I will be providing in the future, let's say I have the cannon computer, you can go down into the tactical bridge, and in the front here we have explosive, punch through, ion, and piercing, and those are the four ammunition types that I've come up with in terms of what EVE ships carry. In the future, I'm thinking of just adding all of them just so there's more blocks on the ship and, you know, whatever. And I think I will be doing that. But uh, you can uh, select which one of these you want and it'll be a full 100% effect. All of the ammunition, quote-unquote ammunition, is located above the uh, loading areas for the ammunition, right? And I'm thinking, on top of that, I'm going to put warheads around the ammunition caches in the ship, 
And if those areas of the ship get destroyed, then they're going to blow up because that's where all the ammunition is stored. Is that not freaking sweet? I think that's pretty sweet. So it's just, you know, me trying to immerse you in the whole idea that this is a legit ship. It's got full interior. It's got full everything. You know, you could put 40 freaking people on this ship and they would actually have something to do if you were, you know, capable of role-playing that out or not getting bored of role-playing that out. It'd be pretty sweet. So, uh, yeah, this, uh, this is the Cormorant. It's not the greatest ship, not yet. It's still not even technically finished, but it is ready for release. And you will be getting it the Sunday after this video is posted, which is probably the very next day. Because this video is coming out late, and it'll probably be posted sometime on Saturday. Even though it's supposed to be posted Sunday. This video has been going on long enough, so I am ending it here. Let it be known that in the future you will be seeing, in general, less uh, Star Made uh, weekly, as opposed to what I was, what I have been capable of doing in the past, and uh, at least uh, in terms of the NEF episodes, Star Made less, less Star Made NEF per week. It's going to be once a week on Friday, if I can. If it's not NEF, then it's going to be something else, like a time lapse of uh, a personal design that I'm doing on the Shattered Sky server or something. But there you have it. That is the Kaldari Cormorant. So, thank you for watching, uh, I guess I'll put a link to the download when it's available in the description below, which uh, will be Sunday. Of course, look out for the release video, cinematic video as well, and I will see you all next time. Hello once again YouTube, Chris the Nightbringer here bringing you some Star Made New Eden Fleet Works and today we have the Kaldari Cormorant. So this is a Kaldari Destroyer. It's one of the most iconic destroyers in EVE and for probably almost like like half a decade this ship has been in the game or at least this particular design of it. I don't really know uh, how long this particular model of this ship has been in the game but it's a fairly iconic Kaldari Destroyer and it is filled to the brim with details and the interior will knock your socks off. I at least hope that is the effect because I spent a lot of time on this thing and it's taken a very long time to finish. A uh, couple weeks worth of time, I'd say. Um, as you can tell, I'm not a quick builder. But, a flage uh, technology, I would say, that allows a ship to disguise itself as a member of another faction. Now, honestly, I don't really know why people within the same faction would be able to do that because Right now, only Kaldari ships have the skins for other Kaldari factions, and Amar only have skins for other Amar factions. They don't really mix between the factions. Ships can only use skins that apply to their own factions or sh uh, factions that would be using the ship. So it's a little bit weird in that sense. But nonetheless, that is now a legitimate thing in EVE Online, which means that there are legitimate reasons for me to provide alternate ship skins. That being said, I will be holding some of them uh, for myself, and I will probably find... They look cool. They look like engines, but they're not like, wow, that thing's, you know, totally thrusting through space. So, I definitely wanted to uh, do something more interesting, and uh, ice is the new technique that allows you to pull off some really new engines, so uh, I've been using that. Uh, you can see all the paneling underneath, all the little details. There's tons of exposed pipes on this ship, and I don't know why, but there's tons of pipes exposed and all sorts of mechanical bits uh, on the sides here. And over here, we've got the Kaldari logo embedded on the side. Now, this logo in particular changes based on what faction the ship is uh, painted as. So, one th cool thing that's uh, recently happened in EVE is they introduced ship skins. And basically, it's a cam a way to release them as some sort of uh, contest in the future or something. Probably through my Twitch stream, maybe. I don't know. Maybe if you donate, I'll give you a ship skin. I have no idea. I'll find a way to do it. But that's an idea. And I don't really want to release every single ship I make. Um, I'm starting to see people use them uh, a lot of my ships. I don't know why. And I'm starting to see people uh, take my ships and repurpose them. 
and refit them and like part of me is like wow that's awesome and part of me is like no i want to keep it for myself so i gotta think of a way to you know give away some cool ships and keep other cool ships for myself i guess because i don't want to give them all away i don't want to keep you from getting uh cool ships either though so that's pretty much all of the exterior they are turret hard points are right here we have one two uh, this is going to be a full tour of the ship. I'm going to show you all the details, give you, you know, bits of information, show you all the cool things that can, uh, you can do with the ship and all the cool things that I put in it and all sorts of stuff. So we're just going to look at the exterior real quick. Uh, we've got some nice engines in the back. In the past, I tried replicating the exact look of the engines on the ships. And I think I'm going to be changing that so that instead I'm just going to be filling in the thruster areas with this glowing effect with the ice and the lights. In case you were wondering how to do that, it's just ice with lights behind it, uh, right? And uh, this, in my opinion, just looks better. Some of the engines just aren't so appealing once they're finished. They're kind of boring and plain, and you can probably tell by looking at the Dragoon engines.